man, first of all, I want to say how grateful I am to be uh, with you all again. It's a great relationship. Uh, thank you, Rabbi Barris, uh, Cantor Nelson, your awesome woman of God, and thank you for just the support you've given our community, um, as well as uh, Rabbi Rachel Greengrass. She's uh, served alongside us as well. Uh, Rabbi Jamie, you've been very instrumental. I just thank God that you're an authentic uh, group of people, and we just love working with you. I, as I thought about tonight and sharing, and I'm sure I'm not alone when I say this, that my emotions, when I consider where we are in this season and in, and in this time, my heart is heavy, to be honest. Um, it's heavy concerning where we are, particularly as a nation, the division. We thought things were bad last year, and look at where we are now. And, and it reminded me, uh, one of the thoughts, I, the reflections that I had today is while the world is fighting over our differences, I am so encouraged that we are still celebrating what we have in common. And that's what makes this night so special. That's why I, I look forward to it. Uh, I was sharing with someone today about just my excitement about tonight, and, and frankly, you know, normally when I go to speak or preach, I, I write a script or develop a sermon. And, and, and this time I didn't feel compelled to necessarily script a message. I just like to share from my heart for these few minutes and, and just thank you all for how, let you know how grateful we are to be here together. I went and I grabbed this shawl um, and I wanted to share it with you. It's called a shawl of reconciliation. Uh, Bishop Michael Curry, who also, uh, covers some of the churches in West Africa. He brought it to me uh, just this past year as a gift. And what it represents is the different colors of the churches in West Africa. And it demonstrates that their unity and that they're in this together. And while I sat there during our time of worship and prayer, it fell on my heart to go and grab my shawl of reconciliation and just share with you the spirit of this night that I really do believe that we're on the same page. And, and I say that because there's a quote uh, you knew you were, we were going to hear a lot of Dr. King quotes tonight, right? But this one was one I hadn't heard a lot, but it speaks to uh, what's really on my heart concerning uh, what we have in common and what we're going through as a nation. And Dr. King says, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. And I thought that that was so profound considering the pain, the struggle, the challenges that we're going through. And that's certainly not to undermine what Rabbi uh, Jamie just acknowledged that the experience of my community uh, for the most part, by and large, is very different. And that's why I'm grateful that uh, we're on with people that are able to take a step back and say, let's learn from each other. I want to start by sharing something, though. Uh, while I was going through some of my things, uh, as you mentioned, I worked as a corrections officer. And some time ago, there was a young man that was serving a life sentence. And he sat down and was doing a Black History program and he just wrote this, and, and I want to share it with you. It's a poem that he wrote called Ship Ahoy. And, and I want you to consider the fact that we may have all come on different ships. We have different backgrounds, different struggles. But when we look around, we are in the same boat now. Let me read this. It's called Ship Ahoy. A message for you to pass along. Don't hesitate to play this song. Talking to the black baby in a mother's womb. Talking to the old pop humming this tune. We have a spirit inside that just won't quit. A lot of things have happened that's hard to forget. Our forefathers were African kings. We came from a land of precious things. Our beautiful women walked along the Nile. They were imitated for their originality and style. A people came from another land. They came to Jack with a Bible in their hand. It didn't take long for the truth to be told. They wanted the land, diamonds, and the gold. Taken from the Nile for miles and miles, lined up by the thousand in single file, packed in ships across waves and tides, some barely made it, others committed suicide, bought and stole to be a slave, whipped and shackled but refused to behave, stripped butt naked on the auction block to be looked over like animal stock. You did all these atrocities in Jesus' name. Time has changed and you still remain the same. Slave, soldier, and then a fool. Where's my 40 acres and a mule? Emancipation of proclamation, what did you do? Design laws that only protect you. Dehumanized and cast aside. Hung from a tree, tar on my hide. Had to go inside and cut off the light. 
because the Ku Klux Klan is riding tonight. Run away, didn't run too quick. Beat my back with a vicious whip. Ropes and chains around my neck when all I ever wanted is the same respect. I bow my head and bend my knee that one day God will let me see when the day will come that my people will finally be free. Name is unknown inmate at Dade Correctional Institution, 1995. I shared that because it came from the heart of a young man that not only experienced the oppression or was reflecting on oppression in history, but he was reflecting on the oppression that we're experiencing right now. And as I reflected on him describing the auction block, the ships that, that brought us here and all of that experience, and here we are on this line together in a chaotic world. And I reflect back on Dr. King's words, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. And my studies uh, taught me something that Reverend Dr. King's efforts in advancing uh, the civil rights movement and racial equality also reflected the Jewish value, and pardon me if I pronounce this wrong, it's Bet Zelim Elohim. And, and basically it's the belief that all people are created in God's image. That, that means equal housing rights, equal uh, employment opportunities, equal health care. It, it means that we really are fighting for the same thing. And in many ways, our people are going through some of the same things. And, and here's where the wisdom is and what I thank God for this, this, this brother. And I thank God for what Dr. King did the pay the road that he paved and particularly the bridges that he he's built because look at what happened now that we're in the same boat look at what we're doing we're ready to listen now we're ready to have conversations because we realize that while we experience oppression from different angles we know that we're all god's people and all of us are going through some things now is this but i, I do want to make another point here before i, I finish there's another quote we say it all the time injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Y'all remember Dr. King saying that. And as I thought about this, although we're in the same boat, I agree with him, but I learned something on my first cruise. The first cruise my wife and I went on, we didn't know uh, how to pick the cabins, didn't know anything about the experience. So we had a small cabin. I believe we did have a window, I think so, a small window. And I'm claustrophobic. I cannot stand being in small spaces. So I spent more time out on the ship than in the room because I couldn't stand that small space. But the second time, I knew better. I knew that everybody on this ship was not having the same experience. And there are some people that while we're on the same boat, not everyone is going through the same thing. Depending on what level of the ship you're on, the waves feel a little different. You can get seasick if you're a little too uh, low. But, but if you're on the right height, the waves, the balance is a little bit different. That's the same experience in society. We may be in the same boat, but we're not experiencing this ride the same way. When the police encounter some of your sons, they don't have, they can talk, they can yell and scream at them. We saw what happened at the Capitol. They can be angry and burst windows. But if I raise my, I don't even have to raise my voice. If I speak in my normal tone, because I have a strong voice, I'm 5'11", but I look like I'm six feet because I have long extremities. So I've been told by the police, you're a big guy. So we have to put you in handcuffs before we ask you questions. And that's while I was a pastor. So yes, we're in the same boat, but our experience is not the same. I'm 50 years old now, but I'm still treated like a juvenile if I'm encountered by the police in certain communities. I know how to speak, I know how to act, I know how to encounter the police, but it's a different experience. And, and what I'm saying, the reason I say that in reflection on Dr. King, and I'm wrapping this up, he was a strong advocate of change through nonviolent civil action. And that's what made the difference, but it was based on his Christian values. Values like blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Values like blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Values like blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. So I close on this note, and there's one more quote that I, I heard from Dr. King. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And I want to close on that note because there is a lot for us to raise our voices about. And when we recognize a person being mistreated, a system that's allowing people to be oppressed, a person in power that is oppressing people, whether it's by word, deed, or inciting others to do so, we cannot be silent 
Because our lives just ended, as Dr. King said, when we become silent on things that matter. The one scripture that I know we agree on, while there's many, I want to end on this quote that we quote at our ministry all the time to remind us of our, of our purpose here. And it's consistent with Dr. King's dream. Micah 6 and 8. He has shown the old man what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. I pray that you're blessed tonight. I really am encouraged by the fellowship. And thank you again for your time of reflection and consideration of our culture. God bless you.